Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. All right, I got a hand from uh, 510 in Commerce. Okay. Are um, you the K, K. Neal, too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Handle K. Neal. Okay, cool. Okay. I open 7-8. Uh, Suited uh, spades to 40 uh, oh. from, uh, like, middle to late position. Okay. Uh, three calls. The uh, Basically, the cutoff, the button, and one of the blinds calls. Cutoff, button, and one of the blinds calls. Board comes jack 10-9 with the 9 and 10 of hearts. So I flop the bottom end of the straight. So we're just I just want to get a sense for the game. This is probably is this like on a later time like on Saturday or later time something like that? Um, Saturday night. It's probably it's probably during the day like uh afternoon, but the game, the game was pretty good action. Oh, okay. So I usually play daytime. And it's like 1500 effective, right? Um so the button has uh a little over 3k and I cover him and then the guy and the cutoff has like fifteen hundred. Okay, so three thousand. Other guy pulled flop. So. Okay, so go to the flop again. Uh, what was the flop again? Uh, sorry, uh, someone is just tried calling me in. Okay, so the flop is Jack <laughs> ten nine with the nine ten of hearts. All right, Jack of hearts, ten of hearts, nine X maybe something like that. Uh, sorry, sorry. Nine of hearts, ten of hearts, and the jack X. Nine of hearts, ten of hearts, jack X. Okay. And you've got seven, eight of spades, so you flop the bottom end of a straight, basically, right? Yeah. The very, very um, flushing board. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, checks to me, I bet 100. Okay. Next to act is the guy, it's uh, 1.5K effective. He raises 300. So, jack 10, nine. Check to hero, you bet one fifty. The guy with fifteen hundred. Oh, excuse me, one hundred. The guy with fifteen hundred uh, stack raises to three hundred. Yep. Okay. The button flat. The other guy folds, and then I flat. So next to act to three hundred, the button flats, and you call, right? Yeah. So you bet 100, raise to 300, button flat, and you call. Right, what's the deal with some of the – I mean, you don't have to give me a long history, but, like, are the guys behind yeah. you winning, losing players, or is there some of those euros or what? So, no. Um, I The the guys uh, – the guy that raised with 1,500 is, like, a older Hispanic guy, definitely a rec player. Mm -hmm. um, the button, I have no idea. He's, like – Late to late twenties, early thirties, uh, Asian guy. I've never played with him. Yeah, that's and that's it. And that's kind of what makes this hand really difficult. So the the original razor is like the, a Hispanic guy that you think is a rec player, and then the, the other guy is like a younger Asian guy. Yep. Okay, that's definitely interesting because obviously the board is very draw heavy, and you know the Asian guy. So you say you don't know much about him either, right? The Asian guy? I, I, I know nothing about him. I had actually been at the table not that long. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that your play is what I would do so far. Um, I, I think okay. that three betting is definitely going to probably be a little bit of an overplay, I would think. Yeah, that's, um, that's what I thought, especially with the effective stack. Yeah, the effective stacks, and also, too, like, there's just, you know, there's a lot of change in equity depending on, like, what card comes on the turn. And I think you can react to what they do on the turn as well. So the turn is a offsuit ace. Okay, so the turn is a offsuit ace. Okay. I decide to check it. Mm -hmm. um, the guy who originally raised, he bets five hundred. So and this is so this guy has basically put in half of his stack now, right? The cutoff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
so I know he's never folding. Yeah. And uh, the button jams. And the button now jams. I mean, I would fold here um, probably yeah. quite happily. It sounds to me like maybe someone's you actually had the best hand here somehow, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, if you're calling in, <laughs> but I just, I can't. I mean, there's a people play king queen a lot. There's a lot of combos of king queen out there, and yeah, exactly. you know you could have. You know, obviously you might be up against a set like it goes set in a set, or somebody might have turned like aces up with a flush draw or some shit like that and gone nuts. But more often than not, I'm pretty comfortable here. The other thing that that you're saying is is the cutoff bet's 500 and the button jam. So this is a pretty big jam, right? Like he's jamming for what, like maybe 2,000 or something like that on top. No, no, no like like three. Well, I mean, you started 3K effective, right? So you guys have put in... So no, got... Well, he he had a little bit over 3K, and I covered him. Okay. So it's more like 3,200 so effective. The jam was like 2,900 to me. and uh, So it was like 500 guess... jam. So, yeah, I mean, you start to think, and you're like, is this guy trying to get me off of some hand? Like, he doesn't know how strong I am, and he's putting a ton of pressure on me. But... You still have to deal with the guy in between. So I'm trying to think about, like, if I was the button and I was bluffing in a spot like this, like, what hand would I do this with? Because similar to the first couple calls that we talked about here, like, say I'm the button and I've got, for some reason, I didn't three bet with, like, ace, queen of hearts or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's jack, ten, nine, right? And we see this action. Why would I want to jam the turn now i said ace queen of hearts i didn't realize the turn was an ace but let's say the turn was a deuce instead of an ace right and the same action yeah. happened check 500 all in why would i jam ace queen of hearts like wouldn't i want you in the hand because i still have to beat the guy in the middle do you see what i'm saying so it's sort of weird yeah it's sort of weird to do yeah. you know it's really weird guess. to do with a draw yeah the only thing i could guess is that he had the same hand as mine with hearts mm -hmm. or um, ace jack of hearts and he, and he hit two pair with the heart redraw and I don't know it, it it was definitely a crazy spot but I guess I guess I was curious about the flop play and on the turn basically if this guy was 1500 effective would you just call off here so if the, if the cutoff bet 500 and then the guy jammed for what 1200 total or something like that yeah, and the other guy had twelve hundred as well. I guess you would just kind of have to call off. Right? I don't know. I I still I I still think you're beat a lot. Uh, I I and even I guess the thing is that even if I'm not beat, I'm like not even that far ahead. I mean, if you were to run this hand into like poker cruncher, or poker stove, the amount of like king queens that are in there pre, you it's like you're gonna see king queen a lot in this spot. And then you're yeah. gonna see, and then like you're gonna see combo draws that have decent equi equity uh, against you, like sometimes. But king queen's gonna show up more than those combo draws, and then you're gonna see the same hand that you have sometimes too. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I feel like even if he had started with 1500, I don't know if you're gonna be getting, if you're gonna be getting like, if you're gonna have 20, 25 percent equity. Um, to call off here against a range of yeah. lots of king queens, right? Some seven eights and some massive draws. Just like I said, I mean, I would have to go and do it. You know, we can, we all can't do it in our heads so quickly. But I would surmise that uh, I would still probably fold. It's not, so you folded, right? Yeah, I folded. Um, the guy with fifteen hundred had uh, ace jack. He just wow, went just went crazy. nuts. Yeah, and uh, the button had queen jack of hearts. So uh, it was kind of wild. I figured if he's going to make a move, the flop would be the place. But Queen Jack of Hearts. I'm trying to think. Like the top pair with the open-ended straight flush draw. Right. I see that, I, and I'm trying to think if that can ever be good. Like I was saying, I was trying to logically think through like what types of draws. So let's say, for example, um, you know, he did have ace, queen of hearts, and the turn was an ace. I mean, I said if the turn was a deuce, but say the turn was an ace, it's sort of the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's sort of the same yeah. type of thing. Like, why are he, why is he trying to drive you out of the hand when he knows he's going to get it all in with the cutoff? Yeah. So I think it's just player dependent, and I had never played with this guy. So, yeah. I've played with him since then, and I've seen him make a lot of crazy moves.
Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely player dependent. I mean, if I it, from a baseline perspective, if you're asking me about if I didn't know these guys, I think I probably fold there a lot um, yeah. to that sizing, even to smaller sizing too. Uh, but that's a pretty cool hand. Thanks for the call. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.